And my real fear is that this is not the final stage that the health police want to push. They are the health police. They are the health police. They want to be able to make their own decisions about what they eat, what they drink, and how they enjoy themselves. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm not speaking this debate today because I love smoking, although I have voted against every single smoking prohibition since I've been a Member of Parliament. The reason I'm speaking today is I am very concerned that this policy putting, put, being put forward is emblematic of a technocratic establishment in this country that wants to limit people's freedom. And I think that is a problem. I will not give way to the Honourable Lady. I will not give way. I'll give away exactly as much opportunity as the opposition gave me to talk about my private members' bill, oh. which I'll come on to later in this speech. Here, here. But the problem is the instinct of this establishment, and which is reflected by a cross-party consensus today in today's chamber, is to believe that they, that the government, are better at making decisions for people than people themselves. And I absolutely agree that that is true for the under-18s. It is very important, until people have decision-making capability while they are growing up, that we protect them. But I think the whole idea that we can protect adults from themselves is hugely problematic, and it effectively infantilises people. And that is what has been going on. And what we're seeing is we're seeing not just on tobacco, but also on sugar, also on alcohol, also on meat, a group of people who want to push an agenda which is about limiting people's personal freedom. Yeah. And I think that is fundamentally yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yep. I go out canvassing a lot in my Norfolk constituency. And people raise all kinds of issues with me on the doorstep. They're concerned about immigration. They're concerned about the cost of energy. They're concerned about the rise of China. They want to support Ukraine. Not a single voter has ever said to me, my big concern is adults smoking. So this proposal has not come from people, from our constituents talking to us. It has come from a group of people who, by and large, work in a professional capacity pushing these policies. And I know back when the Right Honourable Member for Suffolk Coastal was Health Secretary that this proposal was sitting on her desk. So this is not new. And I'm very pleased to say she put the proposal in the bin. But unfortunately, since then, it seems to have been pulled out of the bin and resuscitated. And my real fear is that this is not the final stage that the health police want to push. They are the health police. They are the health police, and people are concerned about this. They want to be able to make their own decisions about what they eat, what they drink, and how they enjoy themselves and I suggest if the honourable gentleman doesn't understand that he starts listening to the public now what I also find extraordinary what I also find extraordinary Mr Deputy Speaker is the fact that almost four weeks ago I put a private member's bill to Parliament to ban the under 18s from being able to access puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones in the private sector and on the National Health Service. Now, what we know is that children have been taking these drugs and it's had life-changing effects on them. It's prevented them having their own children. It's created problems with their physique and their bodies. It has damaged their health. Not only 
did the Labour Party not support my private members' bill, Mr Deputy Speaker? They actually talked and filibustered and they talked about ferrets so much that I was not even able to speak. These are the same people who were saying that we should, in the future, be banning cigarettes for 30-year-olds, and yet they won't vote to ban puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for the under-18s. Now, thank goodness that Hilary Cass has come forward with her report, and I welcome the Health Secretary's support for that. But this is what we should be legislating on. We should be legislating on implementing the recommendations in the Hillary Cass support report to prevent real danger to our children, rather than a vir virtue signalling piece of legislation about protecting adults from themselves in the future. Now, I'm afraid there are too many members of Parliament who have gone along with this orthodoxy. And I'm not surprised that that is the case on the Labour benches and the Liberal Democrat benches. They generally don't support freedom. They believe the government knows best, the state knows best. We understand that. But I am disappointed that a Conservative government is bringing forward this bill. The only other country in the world where such a bill was brought forward was New Zealand under a very left-wing Prime Minister, and that bill has now been reversed under the new Conservative government in New Zealand. And I have a message for my colleagues on this side of the House. If people want to vote for finger-wagging, nannying control freaks, there are plenty of them to choose from on the benches opposite. And that's the way they will vote. And if people want to have control over their lives, if they want to have freedom, that is why they vote Conservative. And we have to stand, we have to stand by our principles and our ideals, even if it doesn't... No, I'm not giving way to the party opposite that filibustered my bill and stopped us taking action to protect children. That was a disgrace. I will. Did, did, she, did she hear the comments of Sir Chris Whitty on the radio this morning when he refused to apologise or explain for the failures of the NHS to deal with the issue of puberty blockers, whilst at the same time professing great support for these oppressive measures which are before the House today? Well, my, my honourable friend makes absolutely the right point. There are double standards on this debate. My view is it's absolutely right we protect the under-18s from these potential dangers before they have full decision-making capability. But we should allow adults to exercise that freedom. And it seems to me the medical establishment, the National Health Service and others working in the health industry have unfortunately been captured by this gender ideology that is preventing them from seeing the truth about what is happening. That is why the CAS report is so welcome. If only we would seen the level of interest from the right honourable gentleman in dealing with the issue of young people and puberty blockers than we had in pursuing his crusade against smoking. He wasn't saying that a few years ago. I'll give way to another question. I was. I thank my right honourable friend for giving way. And as she will know, I was here on the Friday and what, uh, listening to the filibustering and not being able to contribute to the important debate on puberty blockers, which I supported uh, her bill and I'm very grateful for the CAST report. But in reality, there are some products that are banned for adults, things like cocaine, heroin, and others. So society as a whole has made a choice that some products must be banned for adults as well as children. It's just where you put that line. And in reality, unless you're prepared to say, uh, you, you said that you know, people should be able to do it whatever they want with adults, but in actual fact, unless you want to liberalise uh, laws on, on drugs and allow people to have cocaine and heroin and everything else, which maybe you do, then there has to be a line drawn somewhere, and it's just a case of where you put it. Oh, I think. 
I, I certainly don't support the liberalisation of those drugs, because what we know is that people who become addicted to heroin and cocaine are a huge danger to other people, to their families, it destroys society. That is not the level of danger that tobacco poses, and I think those are very, very different scenarios. Mr Deputy Speaker, I will come to my conclusion because I know there are a lot of people that want to speak in this debate. What I am asking here is that people don't just follow the instructions of the health lobby. We have heard about what the Chief Medical Officer is saying. I know from being a Government Minister that there are often schemes pushed by officials and civil servants because fundamentally there is a belief that Government knows best. What I want Members of Parliament to do is to think about this and think not just about what happens if we ban smoking for people who are over the age of 18. What will the implications be for shopkeepers who have to identify people as to whether they are the right age? Will it mean that people have to carry ID with them into their 40s when they are going to the shops? What are the practical implications of this. And I think it's a very, very dangerous precedent that we start saying some adults can have the freedom to smoke and some can't. That is a fundamental problem. It's fundamentally unconservative. It's unliberal and I will not be supporting this bill. Yeah.